We are now in the main temple compound of Thalakadu. There are four major temples situated in this area. Vaidyeshwara, Pataleshwara, Maruleshwara and Kirti Narayana. There are a few other smaller ones as well. Arkeshwara Temple and Mallikarjuna Temple are both located a bit farther from here and so we will visit them later. As you can see, there are many signs here pointing the way to the various temples. So there is no fear of getting lost or missing out on any of the structures. The path in front leads you to Pataleshwara, Maruleshwara and Kirti Narayana temples. This small shrine to your right is dedicated to Sandhya Ganapati. What you see right beside is the entrance to the Vaidheshwara temple complex. The stone archway with wooden doors leads to an expansive interior which we shall see in a while. Look at the base of the stone archway. Notice those images of mythical creatures carved there. There is also a carving of Lord Ganesha at the top center of the archway. These and other features reiterate the Chola legacy because Vaidyeshwara temple was constructed during the 14th century by Chola kings. The construction is done in granite. The golden Gopura that catches your attention as you enter is the main shrine. It houses Lord Shiva as Vaidyeshwara. The smaller shrine is of Shakti Ganapati and of course there is the stone statue of Nandi the holy bull and vehicle of Lord Shiva. Graciously resting in front of the temple. As in many other temples, the steps leading to the Sanctum Sanctorum are decorated with stone elephants on either side. Notice the two colossal Dwarapalakas or bodyguards of Shiva. This black statue here is of Vijaya Ganesha. He is seated on a horse as well as a mouse. Notice the outer walls of the temple. There are beautiful carvings of gods, goddesses, and mythical creatures all around. The entire temple is east facing towards the direction of the rising sun. Inside the sanctum, there are idols of Ganesha and Subramanya along with the highly revered Vaidyeshwara Linga. The interior of the temple is adorned with depictions of Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu. Let us exit the Sanctum Sanctorum from the left side. Here you will see a stone shrine with a large and majestic statue of Nandi resting on top. 
It is intricately carved and of a cream color. The shrine holds a small Shivalinga. Devotees come here and break coconuts as a ritual to appease Lord Shiva. Move in a clockwise fashion around the temple and examine the outer walls. There are detailed and intricate carvings of mythological characters and symmetrical flowers. The beauty and skill of Chola architecture is wonderfully expressed through these stone carvings. At the back of the temple, there is a line of five Shivalingas representing the Panchalingas. These Lingas are seen facing many pillars that hold up the temple structure. Examine each pillar carefully. You can see that they are all uniquely carved with images of gods and goddesses. Some of them even have the image of Nandi carved on them. From this, we can understand that Nandi is highly symbolic of the presence of Lord Shiva and in all the other Panchalinga temples we visit, there are various representations of Nandi in the form of statues, carvings, paintings and other small motives. After having explored the pillars, keep moving until you reach the next shrine. There is a red board here with Kannada script that refers to this shrine as that of Shakti Ganapati. It is said that there are 32 forms of Lord Ganesha. Shakti Ganapati is the fifth form out of the 32. In this form, Lord Ganapati appears in a tantric seated position with four hands and embracing Shakti Devi who is seated on his left knee giving power to all. Shakti Ganapati represents the primordial element of space. We have covered the important points of interest in this temple. We will now move to the second Panchalinga temple, Pataleshwara. Mm -hmm.